My name is Mike Zaskowski. I'm a Senior Research Program Manager in Microsoft Research, and today I'm introducing the Microsoft Research Sequence Assembler, a sample application that demonstrates the Microsoft Biology Foundation, the .NET Framework, and Microsoft Silverlight for bioinformatics research. The Sequence Assembler is a simple and flexible way to work with genomic data by exposing the features and functions of the Microsoft Biology Foundation, or MBF for short. The Sequence Assembler implements several features of MBF. A set of parsers for common genomic file formats, a set of algorithms for assembly and alignment of genomic data, a set of connectors for several web services for genomic identification, and a powerful Silverlight visualization called SilverMap for analyzing these results. In this video, we'll show how the Sequence Assembler can be used to monitor and assemble the short read format of DNA sequences. We'll also query a BLAST service for matches to our sample DNA sequence and view the results in different formats. The first demo I'd like to show is the capability of the Sequence Assembler to monitor and assemble the short read format of DNA sequences. Here you can see I just opened a FASTA formatted file with a number of short reads, short read information, where the sequence information is then described in the right hand pane. The left hand pane shows the various sequences in that file. The next step in a typical flow of DNA alignment or assembly would be then to align or assemble the short reads. In this particular case, we're going to assemble these short reads using the parallel de novo assembler algorithm as provided in the Microsoft Biology Foundation. You'll notice some of the input parameters here are provided for the researcher to tune their specific interest in how to assemble these DNA fragments. And as part of the feature set provided for in the Padina assembler in, in the Microsoft Biology Foundation, the parameters are estimated for the user based off the input data sequences themselves. So we try to make it as easy as possible to make some progress. So I'm going to go ahead and submit, and lo and behold, there we go. That assembly took all of half of a second, and we've now gone from our sequence pane to our contigs pane with a contigs tree view that also shows the assembled sequences with a report view that shows the amount of time and the description of what was processed and the total length of the output, and then also a visual representation of the assembly. And each of these short read fragments are then displayed in order of starting index, and then you can zoom in and view the specific amino acids for the assembled sequences themselves. So you get a synchronized view both in the top and the bottom, and are able to drill in or drill out as you like. The next capability that's provided in the sequence assembler then is the ability to blast a sequence and there's various web service connectors available in the Microsoft Biology Foundation which are all exposed here in the sequence assembler including Azure Blast which is a sample a demonstration capability of the Microsoft Azure cloud service using Blast as well as a service offered by Cornell University in their BioHPC lab and the normal uh, EBI and NCBI versions of BLAST that are publicly available and supported by various organizational and tax dollars. We'll select NCBI BLAST, and each of these types of BLAST services have different input parameters, and all are fully supported in both the library and in the application. In this case, we'll just use the default parameters again. We've tried to uh, monitor what type of inputs are being used and use those as a starting point. And then submit, and you can see the executing search is provided to let the user know things are, are happening as they should be. And the resulting uh, contiguous sequence consensus here, this blue line, synchronized with this line here is then sent as a query to the BLAST service and the BLAST query then searches the entire database of known sequences and tries to find matches to the query sequence. And the results will then provide us with an idea of what the query sequence is most closely related to. Here's the results. It's a hit table, essentially, of BLAST results and each of these are um, identifiers of different genes that it's found. Here's the number of identity and alignments and lengths, and essentially you get an e-value and score of how closely this gene matches the query sequence. And you can see we've got some very close matches all the way down on this hit table. Perhaps an easier way to visualize this would be then to use this uh, silver map component, which has uh, been contributed by the Queensland University of Technology in Brisbane, Australia. And this control essentially provides the hit table information in a heat map type of visualization. 
so that you can see the closeness in, in similarity of the returned hit values to the query sequence in the middle. And by zooming in and by selecting the different data, you can select on something and it will give you the details of that object in the right-hand pane. In this case, this is Bos taurus acidic ribosomal phosphoprotein. And what we can assume by looking around this very close proximity of hits in this circle pattern shows that there's many similarities of equal distant score value. We're dealing with a ribosomal protein. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. To learn more about the Microsoft Biology Foundation, including more videos and download information, be sure to check out research.microsoft.com forward slash bio. Thanks.